Hello, welcome back to Red 5 Scale Models. I bought this kit last year, I think, last summer, and immediately was really excited, really looking forward to doing it. Um, I haven't really done many of the border um, kits, if any, in fact, and I was intrigued by the 1 to 35 scale. Um, it's an odd one, it certainly is an odd one in terms of aftermarkets and stuff, but I'll come on to that later. Um, if you can hear, snoring it's the dog he's asleep in the background um i bought this and then at a june about this year i bought the stuka and one to 35. it's immediately looks like an amazing kit it looks really really good um we'll have a look inside in a minute but it's also a kind of kit of two halves it's i haven't built it obviously yet and i haven't built a border kit so i can't speak for the quality but looking in the box it does look really good however there's a couple of bits and bobs that i think border have really dropped the ball on that uh, would stop it from being an absolutely perfect kit so yeah this is it let's open the box absolutely lovely artwork on the front um, I'll come back to that in a bit. We'll do a bit of a bit of a shit shit sandwich. Let's see. Um, I'll do what I think is really good about this kit first. Show you the detail in the bag. Open the bags, um, and then I'll cover a couple of the things that are quality of life issues, minor irritations, and some for me big irritations. Um, we'll start off with. We'll put that to one side. For a minute. Um, it comes with obviously decal sheets. There are several options in the back, but I think only three come with this kit. I can't open them. They look alright. I've seen one or two reviews online saying that they're incredibly thin and they do look pretty thin, if I'm honest. But a lot of this is going to be probably cut with a cricket cutter and masked and sprayed. Um, I'm debating doing either is it Seaman or Crystal, which is Barkhorn. Um, probably the Barkhorn one. I just like look the camo. It hasn't got that speckle thing. It's got quite a neat, nice camo pattern to it um, with the splinter, etc. On the wings, a little bit of photo edge. I think that's for the wheel bays and the wheels. I'm not sure exactly. Into the nitty gritty. Put that over there your sprue um, the detail just looks absolutely top notch um, it really really does if I can open it absolutely top notch it's got all the rivet lines absolutely crisp get a nice um, thin couple of coats of Mr Hobby on that it'll take a wash, a uh, pin wash really nicely and really make it stand out I don't know if you can see them there absolutely brilliant detail like I say I've got no idea about the fit from a couple of the other online view reviews I've seen YouTube videos the fit looks pretty much bob on um, when you open the box and have a look at it and the same goes for the Junkers 87 or the Stuka um, it just it blows your mind. It's it's really really excellent. Um, it's like a Edward kind of level of detail on the Profi packs, but in one to thirty five, it's absolutely brilliant. And I built a couple of um, Ravel one to thirty seconds, and they were okay, but they cost thirty quid. Um, this is an interesting couple of sprues because what they've done is they've done it in the grey the grey plastic. And then they've replicated it in the clear plastic. So you've got the options, obviously there's your canopies. You've then got the options to put the cowlings on clear, so you can see in the engine, because this comes with a full engine, which I'll show you. Um, and, and it, what looks to be a nice interior. Um, you would, ex I would have expected that for a 70 quid kit. Um, I'm gonna come on to that later though. And then you've got exactly the same if you want the, the normal cowlings on, but the beauty with this, and what I can see this as being a good idea might fall on its ass. You can use the, 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 the replicated the canopy here in the grey plastic. Obviously you're not going to use that. 
What you can use it for though, is a template to cut your masks for your canopy and not risk scratching the shit out or cutting into your canopy glass and ruining it. Um, so that's a little bit of a quality of life thing. I mean, I'll probably buy the Art Edward masks, if I'm honest. It's kind of like a prerequisite when you're doing something like this, just to get a nice, neat mask on it. Um, and then you've got your tyres with nice levels of detail on. I'm not going to open all these packs, if I'm honest, because um, I don't want to risk losing parts and scratching them. Even down to like the um, the rudder pedals and the cannons and stuff like that look really, really well moulded. All the exhausts are individually moulded with um, with the holes in. I'll do a build video on this as I go. Um, under, um, underwing rockets, I believe, were not for ground attack, but for firing into formations of bombers, American bombers. Um, propeller blades, I'm going to come on to that in a little bit because there's a gripe with those, not those particular ones, but this particular kit. Um, lots and lots of detail, absolutely packed with it. And looking at the instructions, it doesn't look as though it's overly complicated. It does look as though everything's there for a reason. Everything's got really straightforward assemblies, packed with detail. Not like some um, men kits, um, for example, that I, I've built in the past where it's like 17 different parts to make one suspension arm, that Tamiya of molding that looks exactly the same in one piece or two pieces. The hull in the fuselage, the fuel tank is just got that ribbon on that you kind of just sums up the uh, the 109 um, and the ribbon all the way down the sides again absolutely packed with detail really really good the spinner at the front's got all the rivet holes on um, it's really really good so far so good um, and then your next final sprue is going to be your engine interiorness Now pay close attention to the cockpit, the 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 dials. The molding on that is excellent. However, this is where I start to feel that this kit's letting letting border or letting themselves down. It's not necessarily that it's a bad kit for any one reason in particular they've just dropped the ball a little that would I think make this kit absolutely bang on now it ain't cheap but then again nor is it to me to, to me a levels of 130 quid um, like I've got the one the 30 second Spitfire and I think it was about 120 quid and that's ram with details but you still don't get certain things in there um, but with this one they've gone to the time and effort of creating and molding an amazing looking set of dials it's a 1 to 35 kit there's a lot of glass in there you're gonna see them you're gonna see them so have they put anything in the kit decal wise or anything for the dials no no they haven't so you've got two options you basically get painted well three paint it leave it and by paint it I mean just paint it the, 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 the anthracite grey or whatever colour you want to do paint the dials rims white or and that's it or you have to go and hand paint probably individual altimeters and, and unless you got like a, a, a brush the size of bloody I don't know single hair you're going to make it look, well, most people, most average builders, myself included, being average, bang average, um, will make an art of it. So the third option you've got is to then you'll have to go and buy some sort of aftermarket parts. Mainly, probably, an Edward set of the printed photo etch with the um, various layers and you lay them on top of each other. They look fantastic. But you're gonna to have to sand all that detail off because it's a flat sheet of photo wedge. So what's the point in doing that? There's no point whatsoever. Edward could have uh, Edward. Sorry, Edward, not you. 
Um, your kids, your deck will suck ass, but no, not, I'm not talking about you today. Border could have easily just stuck half a dozen random dials up there for you to take off, put them there. <laughs> Problem solved. Back of the net. They haven't. So now I'm going to have to sand that amazingly lovely detailed part down. That has got that 3D relief that looks really good. Buy and spend eight, nine, ten pound on an Edward aftermarket kit or a another. I haven't actually looked to see what other options are available in terms of aftermarkets other than my go-to Edward. Sand it down, do that. So now the price of the kit's gone up to 78, 79, 79 pound. The kit also does and doesn't. This was my my main gripe with the kit. You get as a limited edition these you get one figure which don't get us wrong the figure itself is a really good resin cast and one of these metal photo etch seat belts now the likelihood if you if you're building this kit it's is you're going to be a little bit more experienced not seeing my my thoughts on a kit when you're paying over 20 30 quid especially if you're paying 70 80 quid for a kit everything you need should be in the box wherever possible now for me if you're building an aircraft it should be the bare minimum should be a decal of a seatbelt like you get with tamia or some photo etch seatbelts that you can paint yourself and bang in there you're paying 80 quid for a kit it's a lot of money these days especially with the way the world's going the issue you've got is not everyone will get them. And I, so you've got a backtrack. You've got Herman Graf, Eric Hartman, high altitude pilot, and then others beautifully sculpted. Do you know what I got? I got the dead pilot. A dead pilot. I paid 80 quid for a kit. This is an added bonus. That's a Brucey bonus. That's fine. I don't mind that. But I've got a dead pilot, which is severely limiting the options if I ever want to put this pilot in there to basically having the plane crashed. I also got the metal propellers. So again, the difference between the metal propellers, if you're doing it in any other configuration than crashed, in comparison to the, the plastic ones you get in the kit, when they're painted, I guarantee they'll not look any different. I could put two of them on and one on one plastic one and I guarantee unless you're a proper rivet counter that you'll ever be able to see them, the, the difference. So yes, they are lovely and I'll probably use them, but a set of photo etch seat belts are gonna cost us the Edward photo etch ones, the printed ones, another eight or nine quid. If you want to go down the fabric route, then you've got to make, you get them. So that's another eight or nine quid. So this kit's approaching 90 quid now. Yet some people, and then if you want to buy a, a resin a resin pilot to go with it, A, your options are limited because Border have decided one to 35 is the way to go. So you get a resin, you, you, I say limited, actually they're not, I backtrack a little bit. There are, there are plenty out there, if I'm honest. But that, 15 quid for a not dead resin figure. So you're pushing 100 quid. If I wanted to build this kit in comparison to some people who might have got Eric Hartman in a pack of photo etch seatbelts, they've spent 70 quid, that's all they need. Bob's your uncle, everyone's happy. Great. Yet I have got the shitty end of the stick, it seems. And there's one option for metal rockets, yet they've given you metal rockets. Makes no sense. Just give every kit a set of the photo etch seatbelts. Okay, you're still taking it in your hands with the with the figures. I get that. That's fine. That's a that's an added bonus. It's to get this um, Jason Studio or whatever a bit recognition, a bit, bit kind of out in the world. I don't think the dead pilot was as a sound option because you're severely limiting your options. You're going to have it crashed. Oh, what the hell's the point in it? So now I've got a resin figure that in one to thirty-five that I can only really use on an border kit because they are the only ones that do and want the 35 i'm never going to use it there's because i'm not paying 70 quid for for a kit to have it smashed into the ground you'll not see any of the underside like you're severely it's severely limiting what options are available to a builder and the instructions i'm going to go through now 
I just think they've dropped the ball there. I don't think it'll impact on the quality of the actual kit. They are added extras. I will buy extra aftermarket photo, photo etch or seat belts and stuff like that. That's fine. I just think for some people to get it and some people not is a bit is a bit naff. It's a bit of a letdown on Borders Park, if you ask me. And it's exactly well, it's not exactly the same with the Stuka. Um, but you don't get any photo etch seat belts on that with the Stuka. You're building a big kit, you're gonna see inside the cockpit, you're gonna see seat belts. For me, seat belts should be a, a minimum requirement. And if it's about keeping the kit, cost kit down and that, that's fair enough. But they put photo etch in there, so it can't cost that much to expand that photo etch sheet and give you some seat belts. You probably, maybe it's not a lot of people will use them. But it means you've spent 70 quid, you've got everything you could possibly need to get this kit looking as good as you possibly can. Because if you put a 135 kit and then go, well, I've spent all this money. I can't afford another tenner this month. Or my wife's on it as, not my wife, my wife's really good with the whole modeling thing. She doesn't really give a toss. Um, but some people have got finite budgets. And they are being hamstrung. So then they go, well, I can't build this kit because I, I've got, I can't afford the extra 20, 30 quid this month that I need for the, for the, for the dials, for the seat belts, if I want a figure. A bit of a rant. The instructions are really clear, really clear and concise. Tells you everything where it needs to go. Um, it looks quite daunting when you see all the parts, but if you actually have a quick flick through the instructions, you realise that it's actually quite straightforward. And it being in 1 to 35, it's not too fiddly. So if you've got issues, health issues, your hands, arthritis, or anything like that, you're gonna have a whale of a time with it compared to something like an Edward 1 to 48. I built the Tempest, Pierre Klosterman's Tempest, and the plastic on that kit uh, in the cockpit was so fragile, it's mainly super glue holding it back together. You're not gonna have this issue. It looks really good. Absolutely clear and concise instructions. It tells you um, support bar not included. Why? Um, it tells you um, Hartman's 109 does not require drilling, does not have machine gun. So it tells you, it keeps you up to date with what only marking four needs a rocket launcher. So why give you options of so metal rockets when you can only use it on option four, which I don't even think is in this kit as the decals. So it gives you rockets for a kit that you can't make without having to go to extra effort out the box. Makes no sense. But then uh, Hartman's 109 does not have a machine gun so you don't put the cannons underneath. So that's why I'm not going to be doing Hartman's because I think the, the, the cannons underneath will make it look bob on. Um, I'm not a rivet counter. Uh, I, if I put the cannons underneath and it's not right for that plane, it's not gonna, I'm not going to lose sleep over it. Lovely, look at this, ooh, look, looks lovely. That's the one I'm probably gonna build, Barkhorn. Um, mainly because it's 109, so you've gotta have yellow on it. And you not here, yellow. And then it comes with, and then option four. So there's one, two, three. So logic would dictate that that's option four. The finish one. Yet. There aren't decals in this kit for anything past here. This is all like, look what you could have won. This is what you could do. But it's giving you rockets. So you then have to go to the extra expense or I'll get added extras. Drop the ball on that one. Get rid of the rockets. Give you photo etch seat belts. Problem solved. The main issue I've got with this whole kit, however, and I'm going to build it, I'm going to enjoy it, I'm going to, I'm, I'm no doubt going to love the fi final thing and everything will be great. It's properly first world, this, this whole rant, if you want to call it a rant, cause it's, it's, I don't get us wrong, it'll sound like a rant. It's properly first world, there are no colour call outs in the instructions. Why? It's given you a full interior engine, quite detailed engine, all the hoses, pipes, the works interior with cockpit all the pedals everything like that and there isn't a single color call out in here until you get to the last page when it gives you an idea of what the, the colors of the um the plane are so again 
for an average builder who kind of wants to maybe take the step up and go, well, I've, I quite fancy this scale or whatever, you've then got to spend your time and woe betide the person who has to go on, Brit Modeler, and ask the question of what colour things were. Because that's about a month and a half of your time that you're not going to get back. And it's a can of worms that I've walked, I've opened once, I buried it in the garden and then moved house. Because I'm not opening that can again. Um, so now I've got to go and either do look at. I'm probably, in fairness, other than the engine, you're going to get the Edward 109 I've got and copy their colour callouts. But it's basically anthracite grey, I believe. I haven't actually looked at it. Something like um, something like that. Even though I hate Model A, um, I've got tons of it. I don't know why. But again, just drop the ball with it. Like somebody's paying, going out there, paying 70 to 80 quid for a kit. Give them what they need to build the kit in the box. You shouldn't have to go and be, you should be able to build this with having, having zero understanding or knowledge of what an ME109 is. You should be able to give this to an, somebody who hasn't got a clue what a 109 is. I've also just noticed, I'm, I'm, I've got a feeling that might be Missing the surely I can't be missing the decal sheet. The don't step lines are clearly on the artwork. No decal. No decal in the sheet. So you are they, are they expecting they aren't on the colour on there either. But they existed on the plane. There's some I've forgotten the wording, but there's some writing always on the side of the fuel tank. It just feels like corners were cut or missed and it just wasn't done as well as it, in my opinion, should have been done. Now, don't get us wrong, if I've lost the decal sheet, all of the, what I've been ranting about for the last 20 minutes is null and void, nonsense, talking shit. Tell us in the comments I'm talking out my backside. That's absolutely fine. I won't take offence. Um, I just think it's a bit naff. So yeah, it looks a really, really good kit, and it looks packed with detail, and I'm looking, I, I, believe it or not, I am looking forward to making it. I just think Border have really dropped the ball here. Um, they could have made it so much better by putting a few extras in. I don't know the process of how models are made, and the, the development parts of it and all that, but they could have make it, made it so, so much better. But that's enough for me. Um, I'll get this is the next kit I'm going to build. I'm probably going to start it soon, so there'll be updates hopefully on the channel. Apologies, I haven't been around of late. Um, life in general. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see how this goes and any other build videos I've done. I keep promising I add more content. Um, it's trying to find time in life. Very very busy at work and. Obviously the way the world's going to hell in a handcart, especially the UK, um, will not get political. Um, but yeah, like I say, don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope this has helped one person out there as always on deciding to make this kit. Don't be put off by it or the sugar. Just take the things I've said with a pinch of salt um, and be prepared for a little bit more work than you would expect out of a box kit for 70 quid. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.